Federal agents in Spokane raided several medical marijuana dispensaries today, enforcing federal law that makes selling or possessing marijuana illegal. But for some families, that drug is a godsend in treating a variety of diseases. Two year old Cash Hyde was diagnosed last year with a stage four brain tumor. He nearly died more times than his family can count and was miserable from the high dose chemo coursing through his tiny body until his dad turned to a controversial place and gave cannabis. To his young son, KXLY 4's Melissa Luck is here, been working on this story. Yeah, controversial, Robin, is an understatement. Medical marijuana is a political football, both here in Washington and in Cashy's home state of Montana. But his father said to me, When your child is dying of cancer, you'll do anything you can to help. His choice defied doctors, but he says saved Cashy's life. June 21st, 2008 is a day Mike and Callie Hyde will never forget. He was just a healthy little boy, born there in Missoula. Cash Michael Hyde's very first birthday, a family now complete. They never could have imagined the journey little Cashy's life would take. He was just your average happy little kid, and then he just started to get sick. It was shortly before Cashy's second birthday when Dad Mike knew something wasn't right. Oh, well, he started being very tired, sleeping a lot, uh, very cranky. He started to throw up. Um, we started taking him to the doctor, and the doctor would tell us that he had mono. For six weeks, it was the same diagnosis over and over, but Mike refused to accept what doctors were telling him. He knew, like any parent would, that something was terribly wrong. I was like, it feels like he's dying in my arms. We need to take him somewhere else, you know? And so we took him to the ER, and that's when they did a CAT scan on him, and they found a 4.5 centimeter tumor in his brain. They loaded him up, and they were gone to Salt Lake City within a matter of a couple hours of finding the tumor. At Salt Lake's primary children's hospital came the devastating news. Their little boy was facing incredible odds. Brain surgery revealed a peanut tumor wrapped around Cashy's optic nerve. When we arrived in Salt Lake in May, Cashy was so sick that I, he, I mean, his eye was starting to get pushed out. Um, he was sleeping 16 to 18 hours a day. He was vomiting. He was pretty much as sick as you know you can get without being you know on your deathbed. Doctors cut into Cashy's brain to remove what they could, only about 10 percent of the tumor. The Hydes could only hope aggressive treatment could get the rest. Three rounds of chemo followed by stem cell rescue then three rounds of high-dose chemo after that. A difficult treatment plan for anyone. So imagine what it did to a two-year-old kid. So the first night of chemo, we did 10 hours with the seizures down in the ICU. And, you know, the doctors told us then he could have brain damage from these seizures. We don't know where it's going to be in the morning. Just going to have to wait and find out. Cashy spent his second birthday in a hospital bed, swollen and sick from the medication intended to save his life. Doctors were uncertain he would make it to his third birthday. It's, it's overwhelming, I guess, to say the least. And uh, we had a lot of scary, scary things happen in June. He got a blood infection, um, went, and, uh, went into septic shock, went to the ICU, ended up coding, and they had to resuscitate him. I was, I was standing like two feet away. I had to watch the whole thing. There was a lot of days we were getting told we weren't going to beat it. You know, you're not, you're not going to take him home. He is going to die. And those are the days where you really got to really believe. They believed and they prayed. High dose chemo was killing his cancer, but it was making Cashy sicker than ever. He was taking 120 milligrams a day of five different drugs to try to make him comfortable. But that, Mike said, wasn't helping ease Cashy's pain. That's going to help get the tape off. I'm going to hold this, okay? By the end of September, he had gone 40 days without eating. He had, he was vomiting nine to ten times a day. He couldn't lift his head off his pillow. He was literally laying there shivering in his bed. And the doctors came in and I said, is there, is there anything we can do for, for cash? The doctors had no answers, so Mike found his own. Relief in the form of a controversial oil, cannabis, illegal for you and I to possess, and something Cashy's doctors wouldn't even discuss. Mike got authorization to give Cashy the oil, and without telling them why, he told the doctors to wean Cashy off the nausea cocktail. Inserted through Cashy's feeding tube, a tiny amount of oil replaced all those drugs. The result, Mike says, was almost immediate. 
You're watching a kid that hasn't had the will to eat in four months, five months, actually take a bite of something. Um, he hadn't eaten a thing in 40 days, and it was really incredible just to watch him take a bite of a piece of cheese, you know? It, it's, it's showing that he wants to live. There you go. Cashy did his last round of high dose chemo with no anti nausea drugs. Mike says the doctors told him they were amazed. Mike never told them why. I wanted to tell him, hey, he's on cannabis oil, but I was afraid they would take it away from him. We wanted to tell you about the side effects, the possible dangers of giving medical marijuana to a kid as young as Cashy. But even though it's perfectly legal in Washington and in his home state of Montana, we couldn't get a single doctor to talk to us on camera. That's how we ended up here at the THC clinic in East Spokane. And I see a lot of folks, and they come in uh, from all walks of life and say they receive benefit. Sherry Allen is a nurse practitioner from Oregon. She comes to Spokane every couple of weeks to evaluate medical marijuana patients and sign off on their permits. What I try to do here at this office is create an atmosphere that is truly medical because I do believe that um, cannabis is a medical and we are trying to use it as a medicine. She believes in the power of this drug and its benefit for cancer patients. She signs off sometimes on 50 patients a day. Then I asked her about authorizing marijuana for kids. It is not common, okay? And I'm not going to say whether or not I've, author okay. I've authorized for a child. It it's a typical answer as doctors are concerned about federal law and company policies. But Mike Hyde doesn't care about the controversy or about the political battle over this drug. He cares that his son survived and is convinced not only did the cannabis oil make Kashi feel better, it prevented long-term damage to his organs. For Mike, the living proof is in this vibrant two-year-old boy. Yeah, it's very controversial, it's very scary, um, but there's nothing more scary than about losing your child. A week after we did this interview, Kashi was back in Salt Lake for scans, finding out he's cancer-free. He's back home in Missoula, back with his family, back to teasing his big brother, Colty. Cashy will spend his third birthday like every kid should, with the fight of his life behind him. And the state of Montana estimates that of the 28,000 medical marijuana patients in the state, 51 are kids under the age of 18. And Robin, we try to get those numbers from Washington, but our state does not track who has medical marijuana permits, who's allowed to get them. It's just simply not tracked, so we have no idea here in Washington. And after today's raise, we kind of understand that it might be even longer before we have any more answers. That's right, and, and that's something that we talked to the Hides about at the time. We did this interview a couple of weeks ago, yeah. and that's the one thing Mike said, whether you agree with it or not, every time they take down one of these dispensaries, there might be a kid or, or someone in a hospital somewhere that depends on it. So everybody involved just wants the government and the, the jurisdictions to just get it sorted out. Mm -hmm. And you can make comments on, on this story and, and let us know what you think on KXLY.com later tonight. That's Thanks right. so much. Well, Cash's family got tremendous support from friends, family, and strangers during his treatment. Now they're paying it forward. The Cash Hyde Foundation raises money and provides things like these reggae runners to children's hospitals. They donated several to Sacred Heart Children's Hospital earlier this month. The vehicles are outfitted with IV poles so kids undergoing treatment can get out of the rooms and have a little fun.